Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Stephen Roth and I'm a board certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. In today's video, I'll be reviewing a common entity that I come across in my clinical practice, and that is the leukoplakia. But first, a quick disclaimer, which is that all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone and do not represent any organization that may employ me or that I may belong to, and that this video is for educational purposes only and should not serve as medical advice. Should you have any questions or concerns about your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. Leukoplakia comes from two Latin root words, leuco, meaning white, and plakia, meaning plaque which is exactly what it is, a white plaque. Sometimes this white plaque is more translucent and see-through, and sometimes this white plaque can be very thick with some texture to it. Occasionally there can be some red mixed in, which can change the descriptive term from leukoplakia to speckled leukoplakia or erythroleukoplakia. There are a lot of reasons that someone may see white in their mouth but I'll only be discussing the sharply demarcated leukoplakias in today's video. These are white patches with really well-defined borders. These borders are ones that you could take a pencil in your mind and trace the outline easily. Leukoplakia is a clinical term, not a definitive diagnosis. There are a few different possibilities as to what may be happening at a cellular level, and establishing a true diagnosis is critical. I almost always recommend biopsy when I see a well-demarcated leukoplakia in my practice, and this is so that we can establish that true diagnosis. The three possibilities, which I'll discuss further, are hyperkeratosis, epithelial dysplasia, and squamous cell carcinoma. The first and far and away most common definitive microscopic diagnosis for leukoplakia is hyperkeratosis. Some studies have found that up to 80% of leukoplakias are diagnosed as hyperkeratosis. Hyperkeratosis just means extra keratin, and keratin is the top layer of skin cells that line your mouth. Extra keratin can happen as sort of a protective mechanism against trauma, like teeth or food or a dental appliance rubbing against the surface of the mouth. And when I'm talking to patients, I like to compare this to a callus on the skin. The next possibility is epithelial dysplasia. Epithelial dysplasia is considered a precancerous process. We give dysplasia different grades based on the amount of change we see under the microscope. I like to compare dysplasia to layers of a cake or those colorful sand art projects that you may have done as a kid. If the bottom layer is jumbled, we call it mild dysplasia. If almost 50% is jumbled, we call it moderate. And up to 75% is severe, and when the entire epithelium or the entire layer of the cake or the entire sand art project is jumbled, we call it carcinoma in situ. And that means that there's cancer, but it hasn't invaded and become true cancer yet. And dysplasia can be a little tricky because different pathologists may have different thresholds for what they call each level under the microscope. The same biopsy may be called two different levels of dysplasia by two different pathologists because grading is somewhat subjective. Also, what to do next after a diagnosis is made can also be controversial. Sometimes we just clinically monitor dysplasia, especially if it's mild. This will probably require surveillance biopsies or check-in biopsies every few years to make sure the dysplasia hasn't gotten worse. Other times, especially for the higher grade dysplasias, like severe and, and maybe even some moderates, the lesion is removed through either surgery or through laser ablation. Carcinoma in situ is almost always treated like cancer. Even after surgical removal and laser ablation, dysplasia should be followed closely in case of recurrence. And even though dysplasias are precancerous, it's really hard to figure out which ones are going to turn into true cancer and which ones aren't. This is also why I monitor all of my patients with dysplasia very closely, even if they are receiving surgery. The final possibility and the least common but most concerning is squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma is an invasive cancer of the surface of the mouth. It's important to make sure that the leukoplakia isn't cancer, which is why biopsy is pretty much always required when we see a well-defined white patch in the mouth. Even if it isn't painful or isn't indurated or hard under the surface, you still want to know what's going on at a cellular level. 
If you wanna learn more about how to biopsy these lesions, I recommend watching my biopsy basic video, which I've linked in the description. That's my quick review of leukoplakias. The main takeaways are that leukoplakia is a clinical diagnosis, which requires a definitive microscopic diagnosis, which could be either hyperkeratosis, epithelial dysplasia or precancer, or squamous cell carcinoma slash oral cancer. Every leukoplakia should be biopsied and followed very closely. Thanks again for watching and be well.